Okay, so I will start with the introduction to world maps and say just a few words about the main uh, lines of research. And then I'll state the main result and explain it. And then I'll start talking about the proof, but first uh, I will talk about some notions that were, uh, that, that exist also for other causes, for other purposes, and I will explain them. And we'll also prove, give some proofs to classical facts about free groups so that you get used to the notions and uh, we will use the same language afterwards in the proof. And then uh, probably only next week I'll get to the core of the proof, of the main result. So, so let me start wi with a short introduction to word maps. Um, okay, so word maps. Okay, so we look at FK, which is the free group on K letters, on K generators. Uh, so let's denote them, denote them by X1 to XK. So the, the elements are just the reduced words in X1 to XK and their inverses. Okay, these are the elements of the free group. And so we take an element, a, a word, the elements of the free groups are called words, and we take an element and uh, we take G, any group. And then uh, the word map W. So W is an element, but it is also a, a map from uh, the cross product of G with itself, K times. K times to G um, is defined by uh, substitutions, substitutions and product. Okay, so for example, um, for example, if I take if W is the word a, b, um, a, b minus 2, b to the minus 2, so it's a word in F2, say. Uh, then it takes, then W takes the pair, it takes pairs of, of the group, takes two elements of the group to one, to one element simply by substituting the letters in the word by the elements. So we, g, h goes to g, h, g, h to the minus 2. Okay, this is now an element of our group. Okay, so this is a this is a word map. And okay, and there are two principal lines of research. Principal lines of research involving word maps. So one is the image. of the world map, okay, and the second one is the measure induced by the world map, or distribution induced by W, by the world map. Um, okay, so I will talk very briefly about the first one, and most of the talk will be about the second one. Um, Okay, so let's start with uh, an easy, so let's start with uh, the image of W. So just a few words about that. And we'll start with an easy claim. So the, the claim is about, we want to, um, uh, to, to, to understand which words are always onto, okay? So we say that W um, okay. Um, so we say that W of G to the K, so G to the K is just a cross product, is G is the entire group for every for every group G um, if and only if. And before I say the, let's 
Before I tell you the answer, let's look at some examples. Um, so let's look at some examples and you tell me if they are onto, if they are always onto or not. Okay, so is it always on to? Okay, so this one's obviously not. If you take the group of two elements, then you only get the identity. This one, okay, you take an abelian group. This one, C. yeah, C, right? It doesn't matter what you get. You can take A equals one, B equals one, and then just put in C whatever you want. This one, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So what you can do here is take, uh, for example, uh, let's see. If you take a equals g, and b also equals g. So it, and uh, let's say b equals g to the minus one. Then you get um, g to the minus one. Okay. So you can get any element, and Okay, actually here you can do the same. No, you, if you just take uh, both of them to be G, you, you get G, right? So this is also on two. So anyone except for Noga has a, this Noga has a guess? What's the answer? Okay, okay, so, okay, I'll, I'll tell you the answer. The answer is that, uh, Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. You, the, the answer is that you have to. Uh, it's only if and only if you can put all of the. You can uh, substitute each letter by power of the same of the element you want, and then you can obtain your element if and only if the GCD. You need the GCD of the exponents to be one. Okay. So if and only if the GCD of. Uh, so I call it the exponent of a. It just the. You just sum. Sum all the exponents of A with signs. So if the exponent is all one, and um, okay, and the proof. So first of all, if the GCD if GCD is not one, uh, then look at, uh, for example, the cyclic group with GCD elements. With this GCD, okay, let's say. Look at the cyclic group of, of size D, and then it doesn't matter what you put there. Uh, it doesn't matter what, what you, how you substitute, you always get one, okay? If, if all your exponents are, for example, even, uh, and you look at the Z C2, you get, um, <coughs> uh, you always get the identity. And and on the other hand, if the GCD is one, is one, then let's take uh, let's for example assume that we only have two letters, and let's say um, uh, the exponent of a is m, and the exponent of b is n. If we just have two letters, uh, and if the GCD is one, it means there is some x. Uh, x, some uh, integers x and y, such as xn plus yn equals 1, and then you can substitute, you can send a to um, g to the x, and b to g to the y, and then w to g to the x times g to the y will be exactly uh, g to the xm plus yn, which is g. Okay. Um, okay. So this was a, an example for an easy claim. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you look at all groups, uh, it happens to be easy. But I will, if you look at, um, okay, specific finite group. 
as, okay, probably a, Yeah, but they were talking about an infinite family of groups. I mean, I'm just trying to think if you think about just about specific finite group. Yeah, family, family, family. family yeah. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I was about to say that, um, okay, but what if we restrict, okay, so what if, but what if we, what if we restrict to, uh, to some, uh, specific family of groups family of groups and most and the most popular family that we we'll study is, is the this family of finite simple groups okay finite simple non abelian groups okay so finite simple non abelian groups um, so now we know which groups are there, but um, so the question is which words are onto each one of them. So, uh, so it's a popular question which words are onto every finite, simple, non abelian group. Okay, and just I, I will just state. Um, I'll just say two things about it. Uh, okay, the word a, a square is never on two. In this case, because uh, every finite simple group, fin non abelian group is uh, of even uh, size. So a square is not a one to one uh, function on the group. But to the contrary, there is a famous conjecture by Ore from 51. So Ore in 51 showed that every element, he showed that every element in the alternating group, let's say n, n at most five, uh, is a commutator. Okay, it means that, it simply means that sigma is uh, the, um, commutator of some two other commutations. Okay, in, in other words, the, wo the commutator word is onto every a n, and he conjectured, or he conjectured that it, this is true um, for every finite non simple non abelian group. And it was only solved recently by uh, and there, yeah, and other three, and three others. So it was solved by Liebeck, um, O'Brien, Shalev, Aner Shalev, and uh, Kiep. Around ten, so they they gave a, they gave a proof, and it it's a very involved proof, including I think two years of uh, computer work. Um, they, I mean, they use some induction, but to check the, I really don't know the details of this uh, work, but just to check the, um, the base case, yeah, they used, they needed two years of uh, computer work. And it was a case-by-case case proof. I mean, they went over all the families of simple groups. Okay, but, but so, so for this, for the commutator, for the commutator word, this question is known, but uh, it's still, not known in general, and this was just uh, a few minutes about these sort of questions. There are other questions uh, re regarding the image of word maps, and there is a good survey by Anir Shalev. Um, so, if anyone wants, I can point them out. Point, point it. I can show you, the, give you the reference. Okay, so now I'll go on to the second line of research which, on which we'll focus, and this is the measure induced by the word map W. Um, sorry? Uh, so now G will be finite, but almost everything I, I will say 
you can ask for uh, compact groups as well. Uh, but I, I in this talk, I will only and I will only need finite groups. Um, yeah. So now we take we get we again have uh, a word in the free group on k generators, and now we assume g is finite. And again, okay. So w is again the word map from k copies of g to g, and and now w induces a distribution on g or a measure simply by uh, asking for each element how many times we obtain it. Okay, so we say that we denote it by p w g. That's the probability, the distribution, the, the probability distribution that is induced by w and g, and it's defined by uh, we take the fiber of g. Okay, at g, this is the size of the fiber divided by g to the k. Yeah, so ju just take, uh, yeah, I can take k random elements from G indepen uniformly independently, and I look what is, uh, and I get a distribution on the image. Um, okay, so two, two so I'll now state two uh, questions regarding this. So the first question is which words induce uh, uniform distribution on every final group. And these words are called uh, such words. Uh, such words are called uh, uniform or measure preserving. Yeah, every, uh, yeah, it, so either uniform, so in the finite case, uniform means, uh, makes more sense, but in, when you talk about compact groups, uh, you actually take the Haar measure here on, on the k-tuple, and then you want to get the Haar measure back, so that's why it's called measure preserving. Um, but we'll call it uniform, it's also shorter. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> or in other words, the same question is for wi when, for which W, we, we have that uh, the distribution induced by W is equivalent to this distribution induced by a single element, okay? A is just a single letter element and um, for every G. So this is the first question. And the second question I want to introduce is actually a generalization. Okay, here we, with this format, we, we ask when is W, when W induces the same distribution as A, but so we can ask more generally when two words induce the same distribution. Okay, sorry, a, a is just the single letter word, the, the word of, uh, with my, one letter. Okay, so you always, obviously get the uniform distribution. So the second question is more generally, when do two words, W1 and W2, induce the same, same distribution? on every finite group. And so here we say that <coughs> PW1 of G is the same as PW2 of G. Ah, but you say when they are no, independent. Ah, so extending one, you ask when 
to Yeah, yeah, that's the, I mean, it's not part of what I'm going to present, but it's an easy extension. Right, 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 yes. And, um, yeah, so the, you can easily, I will state the conjectural answers to these questions. This is only a conjecture, and uh, it is a, you can easily. <laughs> I, I I think the extension is obvious. I mean, I will we can. Um, yeah, extending proof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's. So now we'll focus on these two questions. But first, I, I want to uh, state the, what is the natural answer to these two questions. And for this, I'll need some, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give some observations. Um, okay. Um, so let's say observation zero is that if I want to get this, the distribution induced by W and G, then it can also be obtained by considering um, a, a homomorphism. Let's call it phi of g from fk to g uh, chosen uniformly. Uniformly at random and uh, evaluating at w. Okay, so I'm claiming that another way to get the same distribution is to uh, to generate a random homomorphism from the free group to my group, and then look at the image of W, and this is, and the proof is that we can, um, we can identify the set of homomorphism from FK to a final group G is the same, or to any group actually. Yes, it just tuples of elements, right, because I need to, um, I need, I take a basis, say x1 to xk, I need to set, to map each such element to an, an arbitrary element of my group, okay, and I can, um, each, each choice is, is uh, legal, is valid, so this is just the set of k tuples, once I choose a basis um, to my group, once I choose a, if I look, talk, work, work with the letters, and so here phi, the homomorphism phi uh, corresponds to phi of x1, phi of x2, etc. And um, okay, and then what is phi of w? Let, let's say, for example, that w is a b a b minus two. The same examples, the same example we had before. So phi of w. Uh, by definition, it's uh, phi of, okay, a, b, a, b minus 2. This is phi of a, um, phi of b, phi of a, phi of b to the minus 2, okay? And you just get, if, if phi of a is g and phi of b is h, we, we get exactly what we had before. Okay, so it's, it's an equivalent way to look at the same problem. Um, now, so I use the, the notion of a basis, so let me, I, I need to perhaps define it. Um, so a basis of the free group on K generators, or of any free group, is a free generating set. 
free-generating set, which means that you have, it's a generating set such that I can obtain every element in, as a single word in my elements, okay? There are no two words, two reduced words in my generating set that give the same element. And it is a fact that this is the same uh, as a generating set of size k, of a minimal, of minimal cardinality, of minimal, sorry, of size k. It's only true for uh, three groups with a finite uh, set of generator. Okay, so in fk, every, every generating set of size k is going to be a free generating set or a basis. So for example, f2, which is generated by a, b, a and b is also generated by a, b, and a, b, a, b squared. Okay, you can see that you can use this a, b to, uh, to omit this a, b. You take the inverse of this, and then you get rid of this a, b, and the second a, b, and then you get, you're left with b. And then with this b, you can omit this b and get a. So you can generate the entire group with these two elements, and therefore it's also a basis. And we say that a word in fk is called, is primitive if it belongs to some basis. Okay, so for example, uh, so, okay, these four words are primitive. Um, but, okay, but a square is not primitive, for example. So you cannot find another word such that together with a2, with a squared, it will generate a f2. And the commutator is not primitive, and actually most words are not primitive in the sense that if you take a, a large a random word, it will not be primitive. And uh, we, actually, we actually know the exact, uh, the, exponential, the exponential decay of the probability to be primitive. <laughs> yes, yes. So when I say, yeah, I can take the, these elements and their inverses. So the inverse of a, b is b minus 1, a minus 1. So I take these two elements and their inverses, and then I take products, and, and the claim is that this generates, the, my, you can get any word. Uh, and of course, you, you, you have to uh, also reduce. Reduce means that if you take... Um, a square a. Yeah, exactly. So if you take a, b times uh, b minus 1, it will be a. Okay, b and b minus 1 reduce. Uh, it's not easy. I mean, there was a, uh, at the end of the talk, you'll have an algorithm, but, uh, uh, but there is, a, there is a famous algorithm of Whitehead, which is the most, I think, most efficient, but it's not trivial. I mean, if you, it's, yeah, it's efficient. It's poly, it's a, um, yeah, it's polynomial. Perhaps it's even uh, uh, not not square uh, quadratic. Yeah, in the in the length of the word. Yes, yes. Yeah, I will. No, no, you, you, can, you can get an exact, uh, you can bound it by, the, I, I'll say, I'll s when, when people, will, everyone will know what we're talking about, I will uh, say there. Is a, but this is, uh, but uh, I mean, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not efficient like the Whitehead algorithm. To okay. <coughs>
Okay, so now, so now I want to say what are the uh, immediate suspects to answer it. Which words are the immediate aspects, uh, uh, suspects to answer the question here? Which words are uniform? Okay, which are the words are easily seen to be uniform? Uh, so I'll call it observation one. <coughs> um, and the, the observation is that if W is primitive, then W is uniform. Oh, and perhaps, okay, you know what, perhaps we, before that I should, before giving you the answer, I should have gone, through, I wanted to go through this, again through the, the, these uh, examples. Um, okay, so is it uniform? Okay, so are these elements, okay, so this, um, if it's not onto, obviously it cannot be uniform. And uh, what about this one? Yeah, ag again, because see, it doesn't matter what you take for A and B, then C smooths everything else, so this is uniform. This element, okay, now you can see that, now you know that this word is uh, primitive, because I just told you, and there is this observation that primitive words are uniform. Sorry? Yeah, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, to explain it. Um, but this is indeed true, and you will, now I will explain why. But, if, but here, if you change this 2 to minus 2, it's no longer true. And you can check that uh, for uh, S3, for the symmetric group on three elements, this does not give the uniform distribution. Um, but, okay, but let me now prove you why, why this is uniform. Um, okay, so the proof of this, yeah, exactly. So, uh, complete, complete W to a basis and use this basis to generate uh, a random homomorphism, or to generate simply, let's, we already have a name, phi of g, the random homomorphism from fk to g. Okay, so remember that we said we can get this, the probability uh, induced by w, we can get it by generating a random homomorphism from the free group to, to the group, and then evaluating w. But I can do, I can generate this random homomorphism with any basis. I, I simply, again, I map every element of the basis to make, to a random arbitrary element of the group. And then obviously if, if I do it with the basis containing W, then W is mapped to an uniformly random element. Okay, and, and the distribution induced by W is the, is the same as the distribution of the image, the distribution on the image of W. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, it, perhaps the, the proof will be slightly different, but you can, uh, you can somehow pre-multiply by an automorphism of the free group. I mean, it, when you have this map. No, it's, it's uh, yeah, just, I, I, I would have to say the proof in different words, and then it would also work for a complex space. Um, right. So I, I can just take uh, <coughs> in the comp in the compact case. I, I, um, so if I have ah, uh, 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 you asking why? Um, no, but I use the Haar measure. I just use the Haar measure. No, the Haar measure on on the group G, and then I. Uh, yeah. It will give, uh, for, you can see, for example, remember that you can get from one set of generators to another by Nielsen moves. Yes, so that's what I and, and Nielsen moves, yes. I mean, and if you do Nielsen moves on your product of groups, it will, it will preserve the Haar measure. So. 
Sorry? What? Ah. Um, yeah. Per probably. I mean, I, I, perhaps not, but. Um, <coughs> Yeah. Uh, uniform, right? So, so you have to collide every component. Yeah. To what? To the convex? Yeah. To what? To the convex? Yeah. 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 Ah. Yes. Yes. I mean, my proof extends and the conjecture extends. I mean, also the cases where you don't know the answer, where you don't know the answer, I, I believe it's, ex I, I think it extends too. Um, okay, so, so, um, so this was the observation and this suggests, um, so indeed several mathematicians, so I will say a few words, so uh, Galander, Larson, Lubotsky, uh, and, I mean, so it's a very natural conjecture. Eh? So if you think of this uh, problem, it's very natural to conjecture that also appeared in a paper of Linnell and myself, uh, that this is if and only if, okay? Or, or in other words, that primitive words are the only uniform words, okay? So uniform implies primitive. Um, okay, so this is a, uh, and, and, and in the sequel of the talk, I will, I will give the proof. So this is now a, this is now a theorem uh, in a joint work with uh, Ori Pazanchevsky, who is also a Mendel here. Okay, so this, this is now a theorem. Um, okay, and the second observation, now I want to go to this more general question that were asked uh, about two different words. When do two different words induce the same distribution? So, uh, the observation is that if uh, we take any automorphism of the free group and W1 or W2 is the image of W1 through this automorphism, then um, then they induce the same distribution on every Final group G, or even every compact G, it, it doesn't matter. Um, <coughs> and, and the proof is uh, uh, is also simple. Um, okay, so let's fix uh, fix a basis of F K. Say x1 to xk, and then um, every, and then automorphisms of the free group are in one-to-one -one correspondence with ordered bases, with ordered bases of, the f of fk, because you just, every automorphism maps this basis, this order basis to another order basis, and this completely determines the, the automorphism. So if W1 and W, if W2 is the image of W1 under this, uh, under such an automorphism, then just take, write W1 in the 
in this basis. And then after the automorphism, uh, you can write W2 in the in this ordered basis that corresponds to, if you write W2 in this ordered basis that, co that corresponds to uh, theta, it's exactly the same word, okay? So W1 and W2 are the same words, just in different bases. And, that, and then when, he, by the same uh, observations we had before, it's obvious that they induce the same measure. You just construct, here you construct the random ho uh, homomorphism using this basis, and here you construct it by the different bases and you get exactly, you get the same distribution. Um, okay, and this leads, led to, oh, and this is a, um, a generalization of this, because uh, a word is primitive if and only if there is an automorphism that maps it to the single letter, to a single letter, okay? And uh, so, this conjecture, the second conjecture that generalizes this and this was uh, conjectured by Shalev, but also, I mean, uh, by, by, and others, let's say. This is again, if and only if. Okay, so, uh, if, if two words are in, are in different orbits of the action of the ORT FK, then they, they induce different distribution on some group. Uh, and this is, and, and this one is, I, I, I would say, uh, open or even wide open. In the sense that um, we don't even know where to look for the answer. I mean, <coughs> in order to prove these uh, conjectures, for example, here, you have to, okay, so you know that if W is primitive, then it induces uniform distribution always. So you, you need to come up with some group for every, you need to come up for every non-primitive word with some group where it does not induce uniform distribution. And uh, as you will see, the answer here, the groups we use here are the symmetric, symmetric groups, okay? So we know symmetric groups are enough to solve this problem, but they're actually not enough to solve this problem. And we don't know which groups should be enough. Um, um, Perhaps. So we know that are not enough because we, we have examples. Yeah, yeah. So here is an example for two words that come from different orbits of this uh, automorphism uh, action, but they induce the same distribution on SN on every symmetric group. Yes. And we know that they don't induce the same distribution. Yeah, it's very easy to show that. Yeah, I, yeah. It's uh, I mean it's easy for this for the example. So let's take the commutator word. Let's take this word. So all I did is to change x minus 1 to x. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, so what we have here is... Um, okay. <clears throat> In this world, we take a random permutation and we multiply it by some random conjugate of this permutation. So it's a uh, two permutation with the same cycle structures. And here we take a random permutation and we multiply it by a conjugate of its inverse. But in SN, the inverse is in the same conjugacy class, right? Permutation and its inverse have the same cycle structures, cycle structure. So, so again, you just take a random permutation and multiply it by a random permutation from its uh, conjugacy class. Uh, so you get the same distribution, but if you even take uh, the cyclic group uh, on three elements, here you always get the identity, and here you, okay, these two, it's an umbilian group, so these two uh, uh, cancel, and you just get x squared, and x squared on C3 is uniform. So, um, and indeed they are from, uh, and they, I mean, this alone shows you that they are from different uh, orbits. From, they are not, uh, there's no automorphism that maps one to the other, and. Uh, Okay, and now, <coughs> okay, so I will say, so I think this is the most interesting, but some, in some sense far reaching open problem. I will say to some other open problems um, in the sequel.
Okay, so now I get to the, this was the, this was the introduction. And now I will, I will state the main result. Okay, so this, this is the main result, but there are some details to the main result, to this theorem. Okay, so it, as, as I said, to prove this conjecture, we need uh, witness groups, and our witness groups are Fn, the symmetric all. Okay, this is the symmetric group on L and elements and for every n. Okay, we need, we always need an infinite uh, family of groups. Okay, a, fa a finite family of finite groups will never be enough. One can show that. And what we show is the following. So there's this circle of ideas. Um, okay, but by the way, do you want to say your, perhaps now you can say your, uh, Uh, yeah, yeah, two. Yeah, when do two words uh, induce the same? Yeah. And in fact, here, <coughs> and here the, if you want to, yeah, I'm just go going back to Alon's questions. So here, if you want to, to generalize this conjecture to several words, it would just be, yeah, you, you take an, a map from G to the K, instead of G, you take, for example, if you, if you take two words, you get an, a map to G cross G, and then the question is, when do you get uniform distribution on G cross G? And the answer is the same, okay? The proof shows that, uh, that it's just a pair of elements that you can extend to a basis, okay? It's not enough to take two primitive elements. You, they have to be co-primitive. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so the, what we show, the main result is the following. We show that uh, so we know that W, if W is primitive, then uh, we know that the, <coughs> okay, this is a, a random element induced by W on G. This is a random, random, random element of G induced by W uh, is uniform. Uniform for every finite G. So this was the observation one. And so in particular, we know that the random permutation induced by W is uniform for every N, for every Sn. And now the only property, and this is perhaps a bit surprising, the only property I need from the distribution on Sn is the, expected, is the number of fixed points. Okay, I look only at the distribution on the number of fixed points of these permutations, and even more so only on the ex expectation of this. So, and what is the expectation of a random permutation? The expected number of fixed points in the random permutation. So this is the expected number of fixed points in the random permutation induced by W. Um, okay, so if, the pro if it's a uniform, in a uniform permutation, the average number of fixed points in a permutation is exactly one for every n. And, and the, our result shows that this is enough to, okay, this is the theorem, that it's enough to show that if, if my word induces uh, has exactly w the permutation generated by my word has exactly one fixed point on average for every n, then it is primitive. And um, okay, and, and y as for your question before, Noga, um, <coughs> actually it's enough, uh, even enough to look at. Not all, not every n. It's enough to look at. Uh, okay, S one is meaningless, but uh, up to S, the length of word, the length of my word. Okay, so if it's if it's not if it's sometimes if at some point it deviates from one, you will see it in the first uh, symmetric groups up up to the length of the word. Maybe your algorithm is not faultless. Um. Or 
Uh, but it's uh, asymptotic. Uh, no, the, what I know is asymptotic. Uh, and here I only know that it deviates from one. I don't know. Uh, But I don't, okay, but I don't know uh, exactly how much it deviates in, in these small values. Let's see, I'll, I'll think of a good time to to make. A okay, let, let's have a break now for for ten minutes, and then I will uh, I will state exactly the uh, result and then start with. Uh, so ten minutes. <laughs> okay. Ah. Um. It actually was the, it wasn't like that. It was <laughs> I was interested in the in in fixed points of random permutations generated by word, and then I noticed, oh, I, I understood that. Yes. So the original goal was. Uh, um, okay. So how do we? How do we even uh, approach fixed points of uh, the random permutation? Uh, Ps and W. So how do we approach the number of fixed points in this random permutation generated by W? So there was there was a work of Ni Alexander Nikov from '94. Um, so I will I will say what he proved. I mean, and but one of the things he used was to introduce. So he introduced a, a simple technique. Calculate to calculate this expected number of fixed points of uh, this random permutation. Okay, for a given uh, for, for a given word. Yeah. So it, it so and it, and it showed. I mean, this the proof. I mean, the technique shows that it is a rational. It's a rational expression in N. So you get, and this is actually, it's actually very easy um, to see that. I mean, this is not the main goal of his, uh, of his paper. This is just uh, uh, something he used. Um, so, so you get it for every, for every N at once. Uh, so for example, if your word is, uh, a square, b square, c square, then the expected number of fixed points is, um, so you get, if you plug, if you do this calculation, you get this rational expression. And this is true for every n at least two. Okay, so it will always be true for a, and large enough. Every end that you plug in that we don't, the denominator is not zero. Um, uh, 
Um, it will be at most, I mean, uh, the zeros are here are at most the length of the world, I mean, or even the... Yes, yes, yeah. There will be integers and, uh, yeah. And, and they will, they're actually bounded by the, not even the length, the largest exponent of, of any, uh, some, some letter in your world. Um, so, I don't know if I should give you, explain to you this, uh, it's a very easy thing, but it will take me some time. Um, Okay, let, let me do it. Let me do it very quickly. I will give you, let, let, let's use the commutator word as an example. Uh, not this word because it, it's a slightly uh, longer. So, so in order to calculate this, you just look at, so if, let's say that uh, some element uh, i, um, i is in one to n, So if I is a fixed point of this random, of the random permutation generated by this, it means that there is some path. So I uh, is mapped by B minus one to some J, and then by A minus one to some uh, K, by B to some L, and then by A to I again. And now say that, let's take, now, yeah, now you do some case analysis, okay? The first case is that all these four numbers are different. Okay, so you can, you can show it like that in this graph. So here you have i. It is mapped by, okay, b minus 1 this way. So it's like b here to j. So b takes j to, the, the random permutation b takes j to i. And, uh, okay, j, this is k and l. So k goes, so it will be like this. Okay, b minus one, a minus one, b a, um, and then you want to know what's the probability. You analyze the probability that this is the event. Okay, that not not only i i is a fixed point, but it, it's a fixed point that goes through three different numbers. And then, okay, so how many possibilities do you have for i, j, k, and l? You, you have n n uh, side uh, four. I don't know how to say it in English, but. Uh, it's this expression, okay? You just choose i, j, k, and l, and then you need you have two random permutations a and b. Um, so what's the probability that, that the random permutation a takes l to i and k to j? This is just two uh, specific constraints on your permutation. So after you put it, you are left with n minus two factorial, and the, and the random permutation you just the, the probability is just n minus two factorial. Uh, divided by n factorial, so you're left with n times n choose n, n times n minus one. This is for a, and b also you have two constraints for b, so it's n times n minus one. Okay, so this is the expected number of times you, you have a fixed point of this kind. And then you do the same, you, you say, okay, what if i equals j? And so for example, you, you get you can get this graph. So this is i and j, this is k and l. So here you have uh, B, here you have A. Okay, so this is the case where I is the same as J and K is the same as L, as L. And now you get some other expression. This is the, to, to choose which, are, which is I and which is K. And now you have one constraint on A and two constraints on B. Okay, and that's it. And then you sum, it's the finite number of uh, possibilities when you sum it up. No, no. Um, his his result was uh, so he looked at the the whole distribution of the number of I don't know what the original motivation was, but his result is to look at the entire distribution of the number of fixed points, not only the expectation. And what he showed, he, sh he looked only at the limit, so when n tends to infinity, and he showed that uh, the only thing that matters is you take your word, you take it as a power of a more simple word. So if, if, if you write your w as u to the d, where u is not a power, and d, so d is maximal, then the only thing that matters in the random, in the asymptotic distribution of the number of fixed points is this one. 
So if your world is not a power, the asymptotic distribution of the number of fixed points is exactly like the one in a uniform distribution, in a uniform permutation. Um, okay. No, no, only asymptotically. Right. But you can see in my fi you can see also in my result that if, if the world is not a power, asymptotically the expectation will be one. Yeah, asymptotically the expectation is one. And actually, uh, one way to prove this is, OK, never mind, I, I don't want to. OK. So, so this is what uh, Nika introduced in 94. And uh, so what we do is that we, we take these expressions, this rational expression, but we, 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 write, uh, we write this expression as a Lorentz. Like that? Hmm? Yeah. So we write Lorentz series. So, for, so in this case, so we, we write Lorentz series in N. So what we get here, uh, in this example, so now I go back to this example, A square, B square, C square. So in this case, we get, uh, so the largest term is 1. And then you have here. Sorry? Uh, you just see by the, by the example. Just take. Uh, so actually, I'm only, I'm only interested in the first two terms, actually. So, um, so I, will, I will write this, this expression as 1 plus 1 over n squared. This is what you get. And then. That's it. I'm just interested in the first two, uh, first two uh, expressions in the Lorentz series. Um, and this is where our more elaborated result is, is, is takes place. So you can think of this one. This corresponds to the uh, expectation for a uniform distribution. And this one, so and then this one is the deviation, the first order deviation. And we analyze the first order deviation, and it turns out, it turns out that this one. No, but it will. You can get one over n, and and if it's a power, and you can also get one. Oh, so you look at the first and the yeah, you, you actually what you actually what you actually do is take this and subtract one, mm -hmm. and you look at the first, and and then you look at the first term um, in this. Uh, so you said if it's a power, you would actually get uh, already the main term. Right. Yeah, you would actually get here. Yeah. And and it turns out that this comes from uh, comes from algebraic properties of the, of the world. And, <clears throat> and, now, and now I want to, uh, to state what are these algebraic properties of the world. And so let's go to back to some facts about, so, so two facts about free groups. So first, the first one, uh, and I will prove both of them. I, I intend to prove both of them uh, soon. So first of all, every subgroup of a free group is free. So what, what does it mean that it's a free group? It means that it has a free generating set. It has, has a free generating set. It can be, yeah, this is, a, it's not like in a vector spaces. Uh, the basis, so if I take a free, gener a free generating set or a basis of age, it can be arbitrarily long. It, it can even be countable. Um, and it can also be smaller than K, but. Uh, 
Uh, this is a Nielsen trial theorem. So I think Nielsen proved it for uh, subgroups of uh, finite index or finite uh, rank. I'm not sure. So he showed uh, some case and then trial uh, from 1920s. And, and but I will prove it because uh, I need the language of the proof. I, I will not give their proof because their proof is much more uh, sophistic, much more uh, uh, so hard or sophisticated. Or, uh, I will give a simple a simple proof. And uh, the second fact is that if W is primitive in the ambient group, in the big group, then W is also primitive in every subgroup containing it. Containing it. Okay, so if I take a subgroup uh, of, of, of the free group which, where w, uh, where, which contains W, uh, then the question whether W is primitive or not is different, okay? The, um, for example, <coughs> every word, if I take the subgroup generated by the word, then W is primitive in this subgroup, okay? Well, Except for this fact. Yeah. Uh, they are more than in between the subgroups. They are they can't be pure. Can they? So because then W will not be pure. So what you can be pure is can they be pure? Yeah. yeah. So the this smaller group is more general. Yes, but. But. You are claiming. Yes. Claiming what can they be? You can always take it pure with the expectation. I mean, in general, you cannot extend. You take the basis of, of yeah, if. No, I mean, it's not hard, but and I will give the proof soon, but uh, it's it's not obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the same proof will. Uh, but but the subgroup has to, of course, it has to contain all of them, of course. Um, <coughs> okay, and 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 the question is, what? But what if if W is not primitive? In FK, what is the so so now there's no longer such a rule that W so W can either be primitive or non-primitive in subgroups, and the question is what's what's the smallest group, the smallest subgroup uh, manifesting this. And smallest, I mean rank. Okay, so, so uh, I mean. Rank is the number of generators. Number of generators yes, rank is the number of generators. So, uh, what is the, sm the, s the group of smallest uh, number of generators that shows the subgroup the, where W is not primitive? Okay, and this leads me to the, to the following definition. So, we said that the primitivity rank. So rank of a free group is generally the number of generators. And uh, the primitivity rank of W uh, is, and we denote it by pi of W, so now you go over all the subgroups of Fk containing W, and, but only those where W is not primitive. W is not primitive in age. And now you want to take the smallest rank. So you take the smallest rank of a subgroup where W is not primitive. Wait, what happens? So uh, FK itself is a subgroup. Right. But it's only the smallest. It's already the smallest. I mean, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and if. Uh, 
and uh, if there are no such days, h, if there is no such h, uh, then we say that the permittivity rank is infinity. And indeed, this is so now we already know. So this is the definition. Right. Fk is a possible, yes. Yeah, unless. Yeah, so, so, yeah, if w is primitive in fk, so by this second fact, it's always primitive in every subgroup, so there is no, there are no such a's, so this is infinity, and if w is not primitive, in fk, then fk, like you said, fk itself is candidate here, is one of these subgroups. And fk is of rank k, so the minimum is at most k. So from here we get that primitivity rank is somewhere between 0 to k or infinity. And uh, let's, to, to digest this, let's uh, look at some... Uh, Let's look at some uh, more concrete examples. So we know that if, uh, <coughs> so we already know that the primitivity rank is infinity if and only if w is primitive in fk. And what, I'm sorry for, uh, <laughs> you heard it. Uh, no, no, also uh, Yuval uh, heard it uh, last week, but. <laughs> Okay, so when is the permittivity rank zero? Um, so zero means that W is contained in a zero, free group of rank zero. It's there, it's only the trivial group, so this is the identity, and indeed, and the identity is not primitive, okay, because the basis of the trivial group is empty. The only basis is empty. This is only the trivial word. Okay, and when do we get one? So one means that W is contained in the free group of rank one. It's a cyclic group. But it's not, a gen it's not primitive. It's not a generator of this cyclic group. So in other words, it's a power, OK? It's a power of the generator. So W is a power, or a proper power, if you want to be exact. And uh, I'll, I'll give you examples for other, uh, for other possibilities. Um, so if you take a square, b square, or the commutator, th this is two. Yeah, um, yeah, and this is actually because once you know these are in F two, so it can either be zero one or infinity or zero one two or infinity. But it's not zero. It's not. It's not a power. So it's not one, and they are not primitive. Um, we actually already know it's not primitive because okay, never mind. These are not primitive, so it's two. Uh, but you can also. There is an algorithm to generate to calculate the primitivity rank of every word, and here is another and an, an, a nice lemma. Is that if. W1 and W2 are disjoint, meaning that they have no common letters, then the primitivity rank is, is additive to the, I mean, the concatenation, the word that is the, the product of W1, W2 is, uh, the primitivity rank is the sum, not pi 1, pi of W1 plus, okay, so, and this shows, so it's additive, and then, so from this you, you get that, for example, if you take x1 squared, x2 squared, up to xm squared, the primitivity rank is m. So you can actually obtain all the possible values. Sorry, do I? Why 
Yeah. It is, and because these are these joint letters, you can take, it, it's called, a, the free, it's actually a free product. Uh, there is, it's like a, you can take, I mean, it means that you can take a basis of one of them, a basis of one of two, and then a basis of the other one, and then take the union, it will be a basis of the joint group. Um, yeah, and this group will show you. Right. Yeah, it's it's not it's not hard, but it's not trivial. So, and I will not I will not show it here. The, the proof of this uh, lemma. Okay, so now uh, go going back to fixed points. So I need to tell you how how these algebraic properties come into this uh, into this. So the theorem. So again, this is a joint work with Ori Pavlenchevsky. is that uh, if W is an FK, then the expected number of fixed points of the random permutation generated by W, or I should persuade him to shorten his name to Par, I mean, everyone calls him Parzan, so. Okay, so what we have here is again one, and then the next term is n to the primitivity rank minus one, and then and then we get the, the rest is smaller order of magnitude. Okay, so we have a primitivity rank minus one, and, and here it's the primitivity rank, and and here what comes here is uh, it's actually the number. Critical subgroups of W. So what, what does it mean? This is the uh, so crit critical W. This is the set of critical subgroups. So by this I mean by this I mean the in the definition these are the these ages of minimal rank that capture the primitivity rank. So these are ages where ages where W is not primitive but they are for minimal rank. Is it, I, I'm, it's not bounded, but it is finite, okay? This is always finite, and I will, uh, so it's a, it's a fact I will, I, I will, uh, okay, let's say it's a lemma. Uh, this set is always finite. Is always finite. Okay, this I will prove. Uh, it's, it's, once again, uh, the, uh, all the proofs I will show today are uh, not hard, but uh, I mean, I'm keeping the harder parts to next week. Um, <laughs> so, but, but uh, you need to get used to the language. So. Um, okay, so. Okay, so let, let's look at some examples. <clears throat> so let's look at two examples to how, how this theorem works. So let's take, for example, let's take um, if W is A square, B square, C square. So it's the same example we had before. Um, so as I told you, the primitivity rank is three, and the only, and you can actually see it, um, so the, the subgroups, these should be subgroups of rank three where W is not primitive. Uh, yeah, exactly, just F3. How, how did you see it? Uh, ah, 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 <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, okay, it's still not obvious that it should be F3, but it is F3, yeah. Right, so, and, and therefore, the theorem says that the, this expectation is one plus, and then here you get 
The number of critical cycles is 1, and the primitivity rank is 3, so here you get 2. 3 minus 1. Okay, and, and another uh, interesting example is like if you take a W, which is a power. So W is U to the D, and D is more than 2. And U is not a power. So then what is the primitivity rank is uh, it's 1. And what are the critical subgroups? So now I want, yeah, exactly. So if you take, for example, um, so obviously if you take this subgroup, W belongs to it, but it doesn't generate it. But also if, you, if D is uh, 6 and you take U squared, it's also the case. So you, go, you have to go over all the, so it's all of u to the m, such that m divides d and m is uh, less than d, let's say more than one, at least one. So the number of critical subgroups is the number of, gen the number of divisors of d minus one, because it's everything except for d. d itself is not. Uh, so you get uh, from the theorem that the expected number of fixed points is 1 plus <coughs> and then n to the 1 minus 1, n to the 0. And here you get uh, the number of, number of divisors of d minus 1, which is just the number of divisors plus O of 1 over n. So indeed, um, so this is, for example, this is, this was actually, this case of powers was actually shown by Nick already. Okay, show that what you can interpret from his result that if you take the expectation, then eventually um, it will be like the expectation of a, a, just a random permutation to the D. And, and then you get just delta of D. And uh, he showed it for all expectations actually. For all, for all moments of, he didn't show it th this way, but and another way to prove the result is to give the same uh, uh, um, an analog result for every moment of the number of fixed points. And if all the moments behave uh, asymptotically, like the moments of just a, a random permutation to a power, then you get uh, his result. No, no, but you have one plus this. Okay, so eventually you, you get just the number of divisors. Yeah, two divisors. Are you getting the number of divisors including the other? Yeah. Yeah. Including yeah, you get, yeah, eventually you get the number of divisors including the, the, the whole number, yes. So it will be two plus, uh, and if asymptotically it's, it behaves like two. Um, okay, and this, and, and to sum up this, uh, so I like giving uh, so this gives a categorization. So just to sum up this theorem, so we get a categorization categorization of the words. Here is the probability, the primitivity rank. This is the expected number of fixed points. So this is somewhere between 0, 1 up to k or infinity, so, and here we get, so this is w equals one, this is a power, this is a primitive word, and the expected number of fixed points, here we get something like one plus, so I omit the error term, here we get one plus the number of critical subgroups, here we get, sorry, when w is one, we just get n fixed points, here we get about one plus the number of critical subgroups, here we get one plus the critical number of the number of critical subgroups divided by n, and then it goes down. Here we get the number of critical subgroups divided by n to the k minus one, and in the primitive case we again get one. Okay, and, and uh, so so this gives you a categorization of the words in the free group, and and this from here. Um, so this table gives you conjecture one.
Okay, just to remind you that what we had to prove is uh, what we needed to prove is that uh, if the world is not primitive, then you get you get some you get uh, it induces non-uniform distribution on some group, and this table shows you that if the world is not primitive, then it is its primitivity rank is somewhere here, and for large enough n the number of expected number of fixed points in Sn is more than what you expect in the in a random permutation. So this gives you conjecture one. Um, okay, so now I'll also I will say some remarks. To see what that. I mean, if for power you, you get some weak and free mole, then what? If you see why it's there. Uh, I mean, it's easy to see that the world is not uniform for some group because you can take this. Fix points. Yeah, but you need to show that. Uh, it really comes from the cycle structure, but stuck to cycle structure. But I mean, I mean, I mean, for example, if you take if you take the, again Albert uh, Albert's examples or proof, you can also generate powers with small as small as small as as you want uh, average number of fixed points for small ends. I mean, you, yeah, you can generate examples of uh, powers with the same proof. So, I mean, you need to show that there are no other. You don't lose. Uh, okay, so some remarks before I go into uh, into the beginning of the proof. Um, so f first of all, I mean this is that because I want to, to um, I want to uh, um, give some open problems that are related. So the, the same result, the expected number of fixed points minus one is the standard character of a permutation. Okay, if you take the standard character on the permutation, it gives you the expected number of fixed points minus one. So this result, in, in other words, if I take the average standard character on, on the random permutation, I get that uh, this is a, so the standard, okay, this is the standard character of W. Okay, you, you understand what I mean, this is the, so, sorry, there. The I take the character of the permutation and I take the average. I just average over the, according to the distribution I get from W. So this shows you that the standard, the standard character is, uh, is just, uh, because it's, it, this is the number of fixed points minus one, so, so you get just uh, uh, what, what we had before. And here in the figure. Uh, so you get what we had before, and, um, and 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 actually, okay, never mind. Uh, but this, so this implies other questions. So uh, open questions. I mean, I don't know that uh, people have tried to work on it hard. So I don't think people have tried to work on it. So. It, I, at least some of them are not, are sh should not be much harder than what I represent here. So what are the next terms?
I mean, this is uh, not, this doesn't come from here. I mean, in general, what are the, if you want to know what is the next error term in this uh, uh, expansion, uh, I mean, we still don't know. And obviously, you also want to ask about other characters. of Sn. So I said just say very briefly, I mean, for those of you want, who know uh, the characters of Sn, so the standard, I mean, I, I need to uh, explain how to, I mean, each n has different characters, okay? But, and so I need to somehow get a chain of characters for every n. So I think the natural thing to do, I mean, the standard character is, is uh, related to this young diagram, so I just, take the first line and extend it to get the, the series of character. So in general, I will take any character, and to get a series, I will just, again, extend the first line. This is, this, it makes sense in terms of the, because it's somehow the same a action of uh, the permutation group. Uh, this. Um, Ah, just the sign. Um, ah, the sign is easy. You just, uh, yeah, the sign character, you just, I mean, if all your exponents are even, then it's always one, and otherwise it's half and half. Ah, you get the same. Uh, yeah, but I, perhaps you can easily show also this, but it's, yeah, I'm not sure. And also, what about other characters of uh, other groups? Okay, so there are some very interesting prob problems here, and, and I will also say that actually uh, saying that the distribution is not uniform is the same as saying that there is some non-trivial character such that this is not zero, okay, because you can you can uh, recover the distribution from the, these numbers, from, the, uh, from these uh, characters um, in, in, in this case. Okay, and uh, <coughs> so this is the first remark. And the second remark is that, uh, okay, so if, if I use this, this theorem uh, with some more work, can be used to give uh, new proofs or new, new uh, approach to prove things about expansion of random grab, uh, expansion of random graphs. Because you can, you can, you can generate random graphs by random permutations and then somehow uh, counting close paths is, has to do with counting uh, fixed points. And this was uh, actually my initial motivation in looking at this. Uh, uh, not necessarily, we take random coverings. And then, yes, yes, fixed degrees, yes. And you can recover Friedman's results exactly all the No, not exactly. There's still a gap of uh, zero, not, <laughs> epsilon is what they want, uh, 0 0.8 uh, something okay. for every D. <clears throat> okay, and, uh, and and finally, just uh, another open question, which is not related to this one. Uh, so still open is, can we replace Sn? I mean, we use Sn as witness groups, so the question is whether we can replace it for, say, for example, by uh, solvable groups. Because, for example, nilpotent groups are not enough. Nilpotent groups, there are uniform words, words that induce uniform dis distribution on every nilpotent group, but they are not primitive. And also, what about uh, by a, sing a single compact group, compact Lie group? Okay, you can, I'm, I'm saying Lie group because, uh, 
if you just want a single group, if you just want a single group that captures everything, so as I said, a finder group is not enough, but you can generate uh, the, just the factor, you can take the product of all Sn, it will be a, a compact group and then it has a harm measure, and you can do everything and it will be enough for this one group, but uh, is there some more interesting example? Um, I don't even know that SU2 does not work. I think I think it doesn't work for the general conjecture. So I think uh, you can show that uh, there are two words in different orbits that do not induce that do induce the same distribution on SU2. But uh, even powers, I think um, x, x to some power. But uh, I don't know more than that. Yeah, so now I'm proving these two facts. Yeah, okay. So we'll not get to say the related notion. I just proved, yeah, let's just prove. Are there, ah, they are still here. Good. So now I'm going to prove these two facts. And it is, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, giving it, I'm giving them because, first of all, it's, it's nice and interesting, but also because I will need the same uh, ideas later. Okay, I, I will need the some notions from these proofs later, um, next week. So first of all, we want to prove uh, that every, subgroup of, F of Fk is free. This is a Nielsen-Schreier theorem. Um, okay, but this is not the, not the original proof. So actually it's very easy, this proof is very easy uh, if you are willing to understand, to get uh, the, the basic facts from algebraic topology. But these basic facts are even easier for graphs, so I will just uh, say them here without without uh, assuming any algebraic topology. Um, so first of all, know that F k is the fundamental group of the star with k loops. Okay, and and and. The fundamental group of, of the star is just, we just take the closed path at this vertex. We have here k, k loops. We take the closed path, and all the closed path at this vertex up to a reduction, up to a homotopy or up to reduction. So if a path, uh, if we have a path that does something like that and goes, and goes back, goes backtracking, we can reduce it. And uh, we only look at reduced path. Um, and, and the multiplication is you take uh, some closed path and another one and you concatenate them. This is the multiplication of two elements. Um, so we, 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 want, we even want to, if we give names to these loops, to these, ed to the, to these uh, edges, uh, x3, etc. So now we can, from every, every reduced path here, you can write the letters you see, and if you go the other way, you call it x1 to the minus 1, and this is simply, you, you exactly get fk if you do that. Um, and now, if for a subgroup, uh, let's consider the Schreier graph. So I, I will explain what it means. Consider the Schreier graph. of the action of fk on the right cosets. So this is just the right cosets of age. It means that, um, okay, the right cosets of age with this uh, 
with, with the same generating set. So x is just uh, x1 up to xk. Uh, so what is this graph? So, so th this is the graph that describes the action of fk from the right on the right cosets. Um, okay, so it looks okay. So, so the vertices are the right coset. Okay, this is this just means that you take h and then you multiply it by w. Okay, for so you go over all the possibilities to take h and multiply it by w. So this is a set, a subset of your of your group. Uh, all the multiplications of W by some element of H, and this gives you some partition of your group to subsets, uh, and the edges, you just take, you, 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 you connect HW together with HWXI for every W and for every XI. Okay, so... It's a directed graph. It's directed and labeled. Okay, directed and labeled graph. So, for example, if we take H to be A, B, A minus 3, and then A square B, A minus 2, this is inside F2. So, the, I, I will just show you, how I, I'm not explaining how how you get it, but it, this is also not hard, but I will just give you, I, I will show you the graph. It's also a pointed graph, actually. It's also pointed, we point, we give, there's a special vertex, which is just a trivial coset, okay? It's the, the coset of age, age times one, okay? This is just age. So we, we call this, this is age. Um, okay, I will just draw it. So this is, an, in this case, it's an infinite graph because this age has infinitely many cosets, right cosets. Or, and uh, so this, this, this is the coset age. Here the edge, that's, okay, let me, this is A. This is a. No, 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 no. It will be just the. No, no. If it's about the, yeah. So if it's the identity. identity yeah, thank you. yeah. Okay. If if it's the identity, you, you get this. You get what you you see. You call the Kelly graph of F. Uh, you, when the edge is the identity, you just get the Kelly graph of uh, F K. Okay, and uh, so the, the cosets of the trivial group is just all the elements, so the vertices here are the elements, and you go from one element to the other by multiplying from the right, in this case, by the generators. Yeah. No, not always, I mean, it could be that your group... No, no, I mean the picture, what you mean in the picture when you draw with... Yeah, it means in infinite, it goes on infinitely, like, like this tree, yeah. So yeah, th this expands to a four regular tree. It goes forever. And that, uh, sorry? Well, no, no, I count the loop as two. Right, you're right, thank you. So this is a B also. Okay, so th this is uh, age. Now, this would be the coset age A, right? Because I go from here by multiplication from the right by A. This would be age A square. But also, uh, if I go by B, I multiply by B or by to the right, I, get this, I, get this, I indeed get the same thing, okay? Because 
This is, this is the same coset because a, a square b times a to the minus 2 is in my, is in my group, okay? So, et cetera. So, you get here all the, you, you have your all the information of your subgroup, actually. And uh, so, I'll just say that this, is a, this graph is 2K regular. And you have an outgoing, from every vertex, you have an outgoing A, an outgoing B, and an incoming A, an incoming B, etc. And uh, the edges, uh, so it has label, labeled edges and oriented, and it has a base point, which is uh, the, trivia co the trivial coset. And, and the claim is that H is nothing but um, again, I take the, the fundamental group of this graph, of this graph, and I, but I, and I um, base it with, the, with this base point, okay? So it means I, I now take uh, walks, I take, um, I look at closed paths that start and end in this vertex and reduced ones, but here I put equality because I, I don't really look only at the closed path as an abstract thing, I look at the labels. So I call it pi1 labeled. So if you look at the labeled path, so for example, you, you, you go from here, if you do this path, for example, what you get is a, 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 b minus one, a minus one. Okay, so I, I'm claiming that this element belongs to H. And it's an if and only if. For example, A, B does not belong to H because it ends here, it doesn't end here. So in order to check if an element belongs to H or not, you simply start here, you go, you follow the path that is suggested by this element. If you end here, it belongs to H. If you end somewhere else, it does not belong to H. And this is obvious because it's by construction, okay? If you go, uh, for example, uh, I mean, it's by, by construction, you get f with W, eventually you get to the element which corresponds to the coset HW. And this coset is equal to H if and only if W is in H. So, <coughs> so this is the claim. And, and, and finally, um, pi 1, the fundamental group of any, gr of any graph, is free, okay? So I'm claiming that the fundamental group, if I con construct such a group for any graph, uh, it, is it is free. And the, the, the reason is that you can, how to show this, uh, so for any graph, just uh, choose a spanning tree. So, so pi one of a, of a graph is, um, I need to also say what is the, I need to say it's a, it's a graph with a base point. So it's a pointed graph. Yeah, this is the, here, this is the base point. So the, the elements of this group, it's a group. The elements are the closed, reduced closed path that start and end here. So reduced closed path that start and end here. And uh, so the inverse of the path is just going the other way around. And the, and the product is uh, you just go one, you do one trip and then you do the second one and then you reduce sometimes okay if you came back with I mean if you came back and then went out again from the same edge you reduce it uh, and then you get a new close path so that's it um, so the claim is that this group is always free for uh, graphs and the the proof is that you can choose a spanning tree a spanning tree in your graph and then, um, so in the picture, it looks like that. I don't know. Uh, let's say that this is the picture. And then um, here, for example, it will be an infinite. But, but then you have a few extra edges. OK, so for example, here in this picture, I could take my Hispanic tree to be everything but uh, these two edges. right? If I delete these two edges, I get a spanning tree. And then I'm claiming that I can generate a basis to pi 1 by taking a, 
by these two edges. Okay, I just take these two edges, I, I take some orientation, and I say that, uh, so this is, this is the basis of pi one, I simply, for every path, closed path here, I just, I, every reduced path, I just write down the, the times it crossed this edge and the time it crossed this edge with the right orientation, and then I get a word in these two uh, generators. And it's, it's not hard to see that this is, a, this is actually a free group in these two generators. I mean, you can, uh, there is only one word in these two elements that gives you every closed path. Um, no, no, I, I choose a spanning tree and then I take the remaining edges. The remaining edges, I, I orient them somehow. It, this, that, this is arbitrary. And I'm claiming that these edges generate, uh, it's not exactly these edges. I, I go through, if this is a spanning tree and I chose this edge, the generator is to go with this orientation. The generator is to go through the tree to the beginning of the edge, cross the edge, and go back to the base point. Yeah, I have to start from the root. And then every, because everything is up to reduction, if I go in the tree and then go back, it, it's always like, it's like trivial. So uh, it's enough to trace the number, that, that, that only the times I crossed such edges, such edges. And this gives me exactly the word in my generators. Okay, so, and, and that's it, I mean, uh, so age is the labeled pi, age is exactly the labeled uh, fundamental group pi one of this graph, but the labeled one is obviously, it's just isomorphic to the regular pi one. I mean, I just omit the labels um, with the base point. And uh, yeah, and this shows you that the age, which is like the fundamental group of, of my graph is free. This is the Schreier theorem, and uh, I'm a bit over time, but this is, the second fact is very, is easy, so I will, I will tell you the truth, the proof. Okay, so we finish by proving the second claim, which says that if W is primitive in FK, it is primitive in every subgroup. Okay, so first of all, so now I'm proving this. So first, I'm claiming it's enough to prove this for A, for just, I mean, A is the W equals A, the single letter, because, I mean, everything I do is just work with, I, I choose a basis and then I work with it. So if W is primitive, I can move to the other basis and uh, do the same. Um, and then let's look at what happens if, so let's say W is A. So now we have a subgroup that contains A. Okay, so now H is a subgroup of FK that contains A. So how, how does the Schreier graph look? What does it look like? So we have here H and we have all kinds of edges. But the important thing is that we also have A, it belongs to H. So we have here a loop with A, okay? And then, and this means that we can, uh, when we take, uh, we can take a spanning tree, in fact, every, any spanning tree of A will not contain this loop. And then w when we take this loop, we take this loop as one of the generators, okay? So A, in every construction, if we use this base, a basis containing A, then every construction of choosing a spanning tree and the remaining edges actually gives a basis with A. So A is, uh, is primitive in every subgroup. And this is, by the way, don't get confused. I mean, it does not mean that every basis contains A. I mean, not every basis comes from this construction of uh, choosing a spanning tree. But... Uh, so the way, the way in general that you, the, I mean, what I was saying, the big theorem, you need to generate, to show that uh, something is primitive, you need to generate a basis for the group containing it. Um, no, no, um, no, not really, but, uh, 
No, I will use... Uh, what I will use from here is mostly... I mean, I just wanted to prove this because it's so easy after you get this picture. Uh, what I will use is very intensively is these graphs, but not the, but some finite version. I will and next week I will cut all these hanging trees, and then I will be left. If I cut all the hanging trees, I left with something that looks much simpler. At least for and for finite groups for subgroups of finite rank, subgroups with finitely many generators, uh, it's always going to be a finite graph. And this actually already captures all the information of age because in this pi one I never go to these infinite trees. So it's enough to consider only this finite, this finite core of the graph. These are called the core graph. This is called the stalling core graph of age. And I will use intensively this graph in the proof. Okay, next one. <laughs>